Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another educational, another instructional propaganda course. There with me, our host, Imperial Dane, master of instruction and teaching you about stuff. Today, we're covering here the recently released land matches part of the Mobile Assault Regiment, a semi mobile rocket launcher, though uh, not quite mobile, say a Calliope, Stukasafus, Panzerwerfer, and so on. It is available, of course, from Mobile def uh, Assault. It is available at five command points, and it costs 350 man pound 40 fuel, making it rather unique for a team support weapon, which usually do not cost fuel. But I imagine there was sort of one way to sort of balance it out there being early available, but at the same time, not easily spammable, unless, of course, you want to leave yourself open for tanks. Like, oh, I see, I don't know, the Romanians outside of Stalingrad. Well, that was not quite their fault due to spending too much on land mattresses. Another story. So, what does it do? I mean, it's basically sort of a saturation weapon, just like the Panzer of are on. You fire some rockets, stuff dies. Oh, generally horribly. Of course, I mean, it is rather different from the other things, because, again, it is very much a tail weapon, which does impart certain weaknesses upon it. Again, it is to a certain extent cheaper, but again, it comes at certain costs. It access, by the way, also to two types of barrages, a regular high explosive rocket barrage and a white phosphorus barrage, which is actually immediately available. The difference is basically the white phosphorus is not quite say as wide, but it's more focused, covers the end white phosphorus, and thus is actually quite suited for sort of dealing with, for some support weapons that are bunched up, packs, machine guns, mortars, you name it, and certainly sort of more of a coordinated assault weapon, whereas this one just for saturating an area with rockets, death, destruction, and so on. And of course, you generally sort of have to keep in mind, as like with all other artillery weapons, rain, for example, dictates how accurate it is. The farther away it is from the target, the more the rockets scatter, the less accurate. Similarly, if you can see it or not, also plays a role in the actual effectiveness of the land matches. So those are some things there to keep in mind, but of course, at the same time, unlike, say, other old weaponry, it is a lot harder to get out of there easily. Plus, it can be abandoned, meaning, you know, unlike against, say, Panzer Weapons and so on there, which can get abandoned, but of course, are pretty hard to get out of there. In theory, if you're not careful, your opponent can clear out the crew and run off with the land mattress, gaining it towards themselves. So that's also a little thing that's keep in mind about the land mattress. And of course, other things involve, of course, you know, clearing out the crew quickly and then wrecking the land mattress itself, which is not so durable. So, of course, in that sense, there are some uh, tactics and counter tactics already there presenting themselves. I mean, it's not quite, say, you know, full hit and run, like, say, on a Panzerwerf or a Katusha, drive up, shoot, things burn, people scream and die. It's going to take a bit longer than that, but on the other hand, you actually have a good chance of running out from it, say if your opponent uses it rather aggressively, which is not going to, for say, hum, say happen on all one versus one match, but on larger team games, it's probably a lot more likely to happen, and thus you actually have a good chance of grabbing one and running off with it. So, you know, you try and keep that in mind, of course, similarly with opponents. Veterancy wise, it gains actually a lot, then sort of firing faster, though it does have quite a cooldown initially, and it actually gains more damage at Veterancy 2, which actually makes it rather rare for an artillery piece since most don't actually get more damage. So that also means that it's a bit dangerous, but on the other hand, I don't think it actually gains any range. So that, of course, does mean, of course, it can't just, you know, shoot from far away forever. So again, it has vulnerabilities, and range is probably one of them to a certain extent, though not a huge one. It's not like, say, you know, a mortar or anything, which occasionally has to get rather close. So, if you keep that in mind, you can probably get a lot out of the land matches, but at the same time, you can probably also count it pretty hard. Light vehicles, for example, rapidly going in, shooting down the crew, and then wrecking the land mattresses one way, say a pair of 222s, or a Puma, or some Luxus, maybe a Panzer IV, an Ostwind, those kinds of things can, for example, quickly do it, or some infiltrators, Falkstremakers, Storm Tubes, quick striking the crew, and running off with it. I mean, there are some things that to keep in mind, then, about the land mattress. So again, while powerful, it is also probably more vulnerable than most others, and again, it has a much higher chance of actually ruining your day, as it is turned against you. So if you can overall keep those details in mind while utilizing the land matches, I'm sure you'll find you're getting the most out of it, but at the same time, you know, wrecking the most out of it as the opponent. And again, consider, H is just sort of more general bombardments, but again, white phosphor is sort of more uniquely suited for sort of clearing out against sort of tight clusters of support weapons or anything like that, though if your opponent likes blobbing, white phosphorus as well. That way you sort of leave a lot of units deeply vulnerable and they can sort of quickly flank in with a vehicle and wipe out the rest or say join in with some commanders and then sort of set up on the treat path and quickly gun down with silent stand guns. 
So it does have a lot of sort of combination there with the white phosphor strike as well. So again, land mattress has a lot of option, a lot of potency, but also quite a few weaknesses. If you can keep that in mind, I do think you'll get a lot out of it, and I think you can also sort of counter it quite well, perhaps even steal it, and then use it against your own opponent. So overall, I think this covers the land mattress here beyond that, and there's not really much to sort of keep about it. And again, general laws of a Tivoli sort of generally applies. Again, you know, do watch the video on that, the propaganda cast layer, there's a it should be on the playlist. So hopefully this has been educational, enjoyable, and so on. If it has, you know, subscribe, share it, like it, and so on, and of course comment on it. This is Imperial Dang Cheers, thank you for watching, hope to see you all another time. Bye!